All right, Shalom Rastafari. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm doing this particular vid because a cup cannot overflow until you fill it up. And I've really been filled up with the wisdom, the hidden manna of Jah Rastafari and the half of the story that hasn't been told. And I find it that it's my duty, my brothers and sisters, to share this. And when you find that that which has been hidden from the wise and prudence, and you recognize that you're still a babe and suckling, it takes you a moment to get your perspective on, on what you've seen, right? What have you seen, right? Behold, this particular eye here that's known as um, some call it the eye of the Illuminati, or many call it the eye of Horus. You probably have heard this expression, that this is the eye of Horus. Well, we confront that particular assertion, and we've found from our research and study that that particular assertion is categorically wrong. Right? It might be the eye of Horus for those who stole this metaphor and have reconfigured, right, reconfigured or reinterpreted or rather misinterpreted the true meaning of this. And that misinterpretation is the key. That's a deception right there. They say that something that is, is, is half true, right, is a complete lie. So if we say, well, the eye of Horus, that's a half truth, really what it is, is a complete lie. This eye does not appear in ancient Egypt, this particular eye, the eye in the triangle. If you know, I've done a couple of videos previously where I've kind of touched on this particular um, aspect that this is not the eye of, of Horus, this is not Egyptian. Now, true ones will say, well, look at the pyramid there. Look at the eye there. They're not studying deep enough. Right? They're not really studying the real root, what they have got caught up and lost in translation or mistranslation. That's a deception. This particular eye is very interesting when we look at it scripturally. If we go to the scripture, we go to um, Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. I'm going to explain to you and show to you right here in the scripture this eye being identified right by the Almighty through the prophet Zechariah. In Zechariah chapter 5, if we go to the 10 visions of the Ephah and we get to verse 5, it says, Then the angel that talked with me, that talked with I, went forth and said to I, Lift up now thine eyes, lift up thine eyes plural, not singular, right? And see what is this that goeth forth? What is this that has gone forth? What is this? It's all about the money. You see, it's all about the money. This is on your money. This is on the, the American dollar, one dollar bill. This is on the obverse right here, what they call the great seal, right? Saying, I knew it coeptus, announcing the birth of Nuvo Ordo Seclorum. Now, what does it say furthermore here in Zechariah chapter 5? We're at verse 6 now. It says, and I said, right, and Zechariah, right, Zechariah, he said to the Melach, to the angel, what is it? You see, before people actually, what is it? They believe, right, what they have heard. They, they heard this is the eye of Horus. They said, this is out of Egypt. This is the eye of Horus. Yet, we challenge you to find in ancient Egyptian parchments, manuscripts, scrolls, monuments, and there's a lot of evidence in Egypt and all around the world that will prove that you will never find an eye in a triangle, right? an eye in a pyramid. But they'll say there's a pyramid there. Well, the question we ask is why is a per what is a pyramid doing on the one dollar bill? What is the pyramid doing on the American one dollar bill? Now there's a very deep conspiracy. People say, oh, conspiracy, conspiracy. What does conspiracy mean? Conspiracy means to breathe together. 
So when you hear that this is the eye of Horus and you do not do your own study and research for yourself and you begin to spout that lie, it's a lie. It's not the eye of Horus. This is the eye of Lucifer. This is the stolen eye. The Illuminati stole this eye just like in ancient Egypt. We have the tail, right, of Horus. Right. Horace's eye being ripped out by his evil brother. Now, in the Bible, in the first book of Moses called Bereshit in Hebrew and the book of Genesis, we have the story of Cain and Abel. How interesting is that? The story of Cain and two brothers fractured. Now, where did Moses get this? Well, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 22, tells us that Moses was learned in all of the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed. So where did Moses derive this? No doubt from where he was learned. You know, you meet someone who has gone to college and school, and they're very erudite, and they're explaining things. No doubt they learned this in school, in the studies. Moses learned this in the ancient wisdom of the Egypts, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, or the Egyptian Egypt and the Ethiopian Egypt. But still, nowhere in ancient Egypt would you find an eye in a triangle. Right? You don't find an eye in a triangle as you see right here, right? As you see right here and as you see elsewhere, right? This right here, warning, this site contains conspiracy theories. No, warning, this contains the truth, not a theory. It's not a theory. We're going to prove this particular reality of the Luciferian conspiracy. This is the Luciferian conspiracy. This is Satan's conspiracy. In ancient Egypt, the Satan in ancient, ancient Egypt was called Sut, Sut An. And from Sut An, the Hebrews say Shaitan or Satan, and we get the Satan today, right? The Satan today. But the devil's greatest trick or deception was making people believe that he never existed, right? Making people believe that it does not exist. Making people believe that the Bible is not true. Yet it is the Bible that gives us the evidence when it's rightly interpreted, right? When it's interpreted rightly and righteously, it gives us the key. So what is it, right? What is it? Acts Zechariah to the Melach. Well, here in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, it says, And he said, the Melak now is going to answer Zechariah's query, where he inquires and he asks, what is it? What is it? Before you go off and say, this is the eye of horrors and that's out of this and that's... Before you do that, first ask, what is it? Just because you've heard someone say it's the eye of Horus, does that mean it is the eye of Horus? We're going to prove to you that it's not the eye of Horus, yet according to the ancient symbolism, it is the eye which his evil brother Sutan, right? Sutan, which is the Egyptian Satan, stole, ripped out of the Egyptian Horus, and the Egyptian Horus corresponds to the biblical Christ. Right? The biblical Christ, where our Lord was crucified, spiritually known as the city, spiritually known as Sodom, right? As Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord, right, was crucified. So what is it? Right? What is it? And he said, this is an effer, an effer. Now, what is an ephah? An ephah, one ephah is equivalent, right, to one bushel and three pints. It's a, it's a measurement. An ephah is a measurement. Some say, it's, I think it's a dry measurement, right, that goeth forth. So it's an ephah, 
right? It's a measurement that goeth forth. It's almost like when you look at the scales, right? Weighing and measuring. It's a certain measurement that goeth forward. And he said, moreover, and the Melak said, moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. This is what I find to be so very interesting. This is their resemblance through all the earth. Let me show you this right here. Let us go to the scriptures for a moment, right? Let's go to Zechariah because you have to see this for yourself, right? And you have to study this for yourself. But I want to show you the evidence. Don't just take my word for it. I'm saying don't take their word for it. So just don't take my word for it. We'll show you proof. We'll show you more than they have shown you. All they said is that's the eye of Horus. It's out of ancient Egypt. And it's a eye of Horus and Egyptians are the bad guys. Well, what does the scripture say right here? The scripture says, what is it? Right? What is it? Let's 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 move this out right here. What is it? Right? What is it? Okay, this is their resemblance. Look at the tricky thing that was done in the King James. Why don't this translate the way it is? This is their resemblance. You see this right here? What word do we have right here? All right? Can you can you see that? Do we have to bring it up closer? The word resemblance, right, in the Hebrew, right? The word resemblance in the Hebrew is ayin. 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 Ayn, ayn or ahin, ayn. The ayn or the ayn, the ayn, ayn is the eye, right? As it tells you right there, it's the H5869. And I, whether in a literal sense or whether in a figurative sense. So what we're looking at right here is a figure, a figurative sense Right? Yet is speaking of a literal eye, and we square this, right? We square the circle right here in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6. So, Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, 6, it explains the true spiritual significance of this eye, right? Of, of this symbology. Now, it says by analogy, by analogy, it's a fountain as the eye of the landscape. Now, I find that to be very interesting. You see that right there? But the secondary meaning of it is as the eye of the landscape. Let's look at the great so-called seal right here. And we see it again right here as the eye, right, as the eye of the landscape. Right. As the eye of the landscape, you can see it's a landscape in the background. Mm -hmm. You can clearly see it's a landscape in the background. Now, originally they was going to have the Hebrew slaves, the black Hebrew slaves at the base. They decided to re um, design it, not to include that. But yet it's very obvious that what is an Egyptian pyramid doing on an American one dollar bill, right? And what is this eye that acts as a kind of an illuminated, this eye is illuminated in a triangle hovering above the incompleted pyramid. Now it says Nuvo Ordo Seclorum, right? And Nuvo Ordo Seclorum means New World Order, right? New World Order. Now, Zechariah, when you study Zechariah in connection with this, recognizing and realizing that where it says the word resemblance, let's bring up the verse in the scripture again right here, right? It says, this is their resemblance, right? This is their resemblance, and you see it right there. That word resemblance is an eye. By analogy, a fountain as the eye of the landscape. Now, if you go a little bit further, let's bring this up right here so we can get into a little bit more of the detail of it as it's used, as it's used in the King James KJV. It's a probably a primitive word. That means an ancient word. It's a very ancient word, oin, right? So this oin, 
right, can also be um, translated or has been translated as, notice the first word right there. Notice the first word that's used in the King James of this. So they didn't translate it as an eye. Instead, they translate it sometimes as affliction. As we see in the verse in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, is translated as resemblance, right? As resemblance. But in King James Version, it's also translated as affliction. How very interesting, as affliction. So this is a symbol, right, of affliction, right, the eye. Now, where this eye really comes from, right, according to its Western Gentile or European translation, right, in this times of the Gentiles, right, this is the eye of the times of the Gentiles. They call it the eye of providence, but actually it's the Masonic eye of providence, or rather the Freemasonic eye of providence coming out of Anglo-European roots and coming over to this new world, right? To the new world, the new world order signifies the times of the Gentiles. It signifies the end times of the Gentiles. So let's go back to this first rate here. And we see outward appearance before think best color. It also means conceit, to be content, countenance, to displease, eye, eyebrow, eyed, eyesight, face, eye favor, fountain, furrow from the margin, him, humble, knowledge, look. So you can see all the different usages. And it's way down here, right? It's way down here that we have resemblance as it has been translated in the Freemasonic Bible known as the King James Version. Now, I say that not for you to run away from that, but to recognize what it is that you have in your hands when rightly and righteously interpreted, when you seek the truth. For ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So this eye that's on the back of the dollar is actually the Freemasonic eye of providence, Right. They, they really tell you that they always like to tell you that this is the eye of Horus. Why do they tell you that's the eye of Horus? Can, can it be a Freudian slip? I say it is a Freudian slip when we recognize the true origin or the most ancient origin of a stolen eye of an eye ripped out where suit on or Seth suit on, which is the Hebrew Satan ripped out the eye of his brother, right? Ripped out the eye of actually his, his nephew. If you look at it from the ancient Egypt perspective. So let's bring this up right here. This is the other um, graphic that we have right here for it, right? To help us to tell this particular story, right? To tell this particular story right here. So here we have, right? Horus, right? Horus, that's really Anubis. Right, that's not that's not Seth, though it's Anubis can be confused for Seth, but Seth or Sutan, which is the Egyptian Satan, is actually the Baphomet. The Baphomet today, what you what they call the Baphomet, is actually the Egyptian Sutan or the Egyptian Sa Satan known as Seth or Suth, not to be confused with the good Seth of the Bible. You see, names are used contemptuously. The names of the righteous have often been twisted for the unrighteous. So when you go around saying, oh, this is the eye of Horus, condemning the eye of Horus, you're actually condemning the victim. It's like condemning Abel for being murdered by his brother Cain, right? For being murdered by his brother Cain, because that's where the, the two the two stories actually correspond. What we have in the Bible, the Cain and Abel in ancient Egypt was known as the contending, the contending of Horus against his evil uncle, Sut, right? Or Shet, right? Shet, Shet on. You also have this in um, uh, Balaam speaks about this in the Balaam prophecy. We're, we're going to go into a little bit more of the actual how 
Horace had his eye ripped out by his evil uncle. This is maybe one of the reasons why they say, you know, when somebody is holding your arm behind your back, they say, say uncle, say uncle, say uncle, say uncle. Perhaps that's a, there's a very ancient um, connection, right? There's a very ancient connection with that as well. But what's very interesting right here, as we put all this together, first beginning with the scripture, first beginning with this cryptic verse that we have in Zechariah. Right now, what's interesting about the name Zechariah, when Elohim, the creator God, created man in Genesis chapter one, he created him male and female. But in the Hebrew, it says Zakar we nekaybal. Zakar is for male. So we have the book of Zechariah. Now, Zakar also means to remember. You see, to remember, ones do not remember the beginnings. So it's very easy for ones to say, this is the, the eye of Horus. Instead of telling you that it's the Freemasonic, Anglo-European Freemasonic eye of Providence, that's actually the eye of Shait, of Sut, of Sutan, the Egyptian Satan. This is the eye of the Egyptian Satan. That's why the verse in Zechariah, actually puts it into perfect context because we read this again this is speaking of the 10 visions right the 10 visions it says and i said what is it and he the angel the melach said this is an ephah that goeth forth this is a measurement now what's interesting about that word ephah right which is a particular measurement it's like if you go to the store you say give me a pound of this um give me a bushel of this give me um, a quart of this, give me a gallon of this, you, you know, you pay for it with a, so a measurement for a measurement. So it's very interesting that they would put this, this um, sorcery, this is actually sorcery on the money. There is actually sorcery and an, an enchantment on the money. Now, when you understand or rather overstand in the faith of the King of Kings and through his Christ, you disable whatever evil intention that was originally put on it. But if you have forgotten, if you're in a state of forgot forgetfulness, it says that the blind, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them who don't ma men, of, of those who don't amen, those who don't have the true and faithful witness of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now let's go right here to Numbers. I want to show you this in Numbers. Some of y'all might remember the story of Balaam, right? The story of Balaam. Balaam was a a, 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 a a heathen, as one would say, prophet, who ironically, incidentally, very interestingly enough, he believed in Yahweh, right? He was a Old Testament, a pre-patriarch Yahweh. And we'll get into what that means make a note of it, but where he was supposed to curse, he was brought along to curse Israel, right? He was brought along to curse Israel, but he could not curse Israel. Instead of cursing Israel, we have this in, in Numbers chapter 24. Here's what it says, Balaam, right? The prophecy from Peor, the messianic kingdom. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes, plural, are open, hath said. Now, this is very interesting. Whose eyes, right? Whose eyes are open. In ancient Egypt, I don't know if you've seen this right here. The eyes, right? Whose eyes, right? Whose eyes are open. Now, that's how it appears in the most ancient Egypt. In, in, in the time of the, the pyramid text, right? In the old religion, in Christianity, say, give, give, me, give us the old time religion. Give me that old time religion that was good enough for Abraham, right? For Abraham. So this particular prophet, Balaam, he comes from that particular generation, right? He comes from that particular generation. And we know that even though he was a prophet for hire, in other words, he believed in Yahweh. But he used his his um, 
spiritual gifts for hire, right? Like a lot of the preachers in the past, they know what's right, but they refuse to speak up for what's right, right? They refuse to, because that might affect the bottom line, but yet they know they've been called to ministry. Many of them have been called to ministry by not speaking up about the reality. They're not speaking out because they don't want to get in trouble. They're trying to be friends of the world. So we can say right here that Balaam was one who was seeking to try to be a friend, right? A friend of the world of his particular time. But he recognized that El Shaddai, that Yahweh is the almighty. And that's an aspect that a lot of people don't really recognize when you talk about Balaam. It's a very key aspect because when Balak wanted him to curse the Israelites, he said, I, I cannot curse them. I have to go check Yah first, Yahweh, right? The same God as the God of the Israelites. And Yahweh says not to curse them. And here is what he said. He said that Balaam, the son of Beor, have said, the man whose eyes are open have said, in other words, he's speaking in the third person. He's, he's in a trance we're going to find. And he said, he have said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of El Elyon. So Balaam knew the knowledge of El Elyon. It's, it's, it's not the way they make you believe. He's like a preacher or a pastor gone bad or gone after the world, right? Who's not speaking about justice and righteousness and, 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 and speaking truth to power, but he's going along with them. Right. Perhaps for his 501c3 or perhaps for, you know, to get along, to go, to go along, get along, to get along, go along, to whatever they call it. He's going along with the world, being a friend of the world. But Balaam here, he says right here, he have said, which heard the words of Elohim. So he knew what the words of Elohim were and knew the knowledge of the most high. He knows about El Elyon, which is the 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 name of God from the Melchizedek period that we find in in Genesis, which saw the vision of El Shaddai. This is the name that was revealed to Abraham, right? To Abraham falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. So he fell into a trance and say he had his eye open, but he had his eyes open. Now, what is the significance of this? We want to get into the significance of of this as we move forward, right? In the next part of this, we're going to break down exactly what the eye, what's the true interpretation of the eye, which eye is it that's on the dollar bill, and why, what's the significance of that stolen, of Horace's stolen eye? The Illuminati stole Horace's eye, right? And they call this eye that they stole, right, the eye of providence. So what we see right here is very interesting, right? We see ancient Egypt, right? We see ancient Egypt. Let's move this over right here, right? We see ancient Egypt. On one hand, we see ancient Egypt, the original, and one of the eyes was stolen, right? One, the eye of Horus was stolen. It was ripped out, right? He ripped out his eye. And the significance of that is very interesting. And this is one of the reasons why they put that eye on the back of the $1 bill. Remember, it's an effort. It's a weight. It's a measurement. It is their eye or eye or their resemblance as Zechariah chapter 5 verse 6 says. And I said, what is it? And he said, this is an effort that goeth forth, which is one bushel and, 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 and three pints. Right. One bushel, a certain measurement. Like, what can you get for a dollar? It's like saying, what can you what can you buy? Right. For a dollar. You know what I mean? What can you buy? They set the weights and the measurements. Right. The weights and the measurements. So here we have Balaam. Right. Balaam is speaking and he's speaking in the sense of his eyes, plural, his two eyes. Right. The sun eye and the moon eye the spiritual eye and the temporal eye, right, are open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, 
and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. Now, if you look at Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, 24 and 17 of Numbers, you find this interesting um, phrase, and destroy all the children of Sheth, right? This symbol that we have right here, right? This symbol that we have right here is the symbol of the children of Sheth. Sheth, Shet, Shetan, Shaitan, right? Shaitan, the Egyptian Satan stole his nephew who in type is like Abel, in type is like Christ who stole that eye. And when it's speaking about this rod, right? This rod shall rise, right? This rod shall rise. Let's, let's continue right here. It says that um, I shall behold him, but not nigh, and there shall come a star out of Yaakov, out of Jacob, and a scepter, which is a rod, a rod of rulership, shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth, right? All the children of Sut, Sutan, or Sate, the Egyptian Satan. Right, which we call in the Hebrew Shaitan, and modern people call it Satan, right? The enemy, the adversary, right? And Edom, Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Yaakov shall come he that shall have dominion, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christus, Yeshua. In the face of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. Now, what is very, very interesting, right? What is very, very interesting right here, right, is the fact that there are children of someone named Sheth. Sheth. Ask your preacher, ask your pastor, ask your 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 Bible study brothers and sisters, who, right, who is, right, who is the children of Sheth, right? Who are the children of Sheth? And notice this is in Moses's, right? This is in Moses's um, third, um, I think third book, is it? No, this is actually Moses's fourth book, the book of Numbers, right? And Moses's, fourth book, the book of Numbers, is he writing this? Remember, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and in deed. But I want to I wanna share this right here with you as well. This is, we're going to go to chapter 23 for a moment and read this right here in chapter 23, right, for a moment. In chapter 23, right, verse 22, it says, Elohim brought them out of Egypt. In other words, we're speaking of, right, we're speaking of the Exodus, right? We're speaking of the Exodus. And Elohim brought them out of Egypt, right? Who's the them? The Hebrews, right? Those who have crossed out of the kingdom of darkness, out of the kingdom of, of the world, the flesh, and the devil, out of the Babylonian world system. What you see right there is the great seal of the Babylonian world system, right? The, the Babylonian world system, it says, he hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is, verse 23, there is no enchantment. There's no enchantment. What we are witnessing right here on the on the back of the dollar is some high enchantment, right? This is why there's a lot of movies and TV shows, the Sleepy Hollow shows, these other movies, um, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, that might be a little bit hyped up with the special effects, but there's definitely something there, something there that goes way back. Right. That they give us one story, but they have put people under enchantment. Right. Under sorcery, under pharmaceuticals and under spiritual witchcraft. 
But here for Ananias, Israel, it says in Numbers chapter 23, 23, remember that verse, 23, 23, it says, surely, amen, there is no enchantment against Yaakov. There's no enchantment against Jacob. There's no enchantment against Black Jack, against Black Jacob, against Black Israel, the Israel of the King of Kings and his Christ. Neither is there any divination. Neither is there no, there, there's no divination, right, against Israel. You see, they put the symbol up there, the eye, the illuminated Luciferian eye, because it's divination. Is divination against who? Against Israel. This is all about you, lost sheep. Or this is all about black Israel people. You still can't get it. But, but, but every day you're using this, this currency, current energy. You're using this energy. If you have this energy, you feel good. If you don't have this energy, you feel bad. That's enchantment. That's witchcraft. You must repent. Ye must be born again, brothers and sisters. And when you're born again, you'll recognize or we recognize our main. There's no enchantment against Yaakov. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Yaakov and of Israel. What hath Elohim wrought? What has Elohim wrought? What has God done in the person of I and I, Black Lord and Savior, what has what has He created? What work has He done for I and I salvation?